Hi, this is Gabriel, and my goal today is to offer a $35 video for free for a limited time. If you like what you see and you meet someone that can get a lot of value out of this, let them know about this video. So you're going to want to remember this website, mastermathcourses.com. Remember to watch the video from beginning to end so that you're able to get all the mindsets for this particular problem from this walkthrough. Well, for the second derivative for part B, we're going to use the simplified version of the first derivative. We, the first derivative can be thought of as 8x divided by x squared plus 4 squared. And we're going to use that, that simplified version to find the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be equal to, it's a quotient, or it's a ratio, so we need to use the quotient rule. Take the derivative of the first, which is 8, times the second, which is x squared plus 4 squared, minus the derivative of the the second, so that's going to be 2x squared plus 4, two, and decrement the power by 1, times, and the chain rule is going to go here. And the chain rule says to take the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of what's inside is 2x times the first, which was 8x, all divided by x squared plus 4 squared, but since we have a square here, we're going to multiply it, so that's going to be a 4. And just like we simplified the first derivative, let's try to simplify the second derivative. And we simplify by taking out the GCF. So what's the greatest common factor between this term here and that term here? Well, they both have an 8 in common, and they also have an x squared plus 4 in common. This one has two of them, this one has one of them, so we could only take out one. x squared plus 4. That would leave this term with just an x squared plus 4, and this would leave this term with, since I'm taking out the 8, this is gonna, this is no longer gonna be there. And this is no longer going to be there. So I would just have the 2 times 2. That's a negative 4x squared. All divided by the bottom. Right? So what do we do now? We set it equal to 0 and try to factor it for that. We set all of the products equal to zero. Well, I really don't want to apply, set eight equal to zero, so I, I could ignore that. And also, from the previous solution, whenever we have an x squared plus four, what we found was that we would have uh, an imaginary number. So I really don't have to set this equal to zero, and I really don't need to set this equal to zero, so I'll just write it so you, you see what I'm talking about. If I said I need to set all the products equal to zero, but this one really doesn't make sense because zero is never equal to eight. And we found that whenever we set this equal to zero, we get an imaginary number, which means that we won't have any critical points there. And I also need to set this equal to zero, which could be simplified to four minus three x squared because these two are like terms and I can combine them to be negative 3x squared. And if I set the bottom equal to 0, well, that's that's just like this one, 
And it gives us a complex answer, so we really don't need to worry about that one. All we have to worry about is this one right here in the middle, or the third one. Let's go ahead and solve this. How, what do we do? We subtract the 4 from both sides, and I get negative 4 is equal to negative 3x squared. I divide both sides by negative 3, and I get that. Well, 4 divided by 3 ends up being 1.333, or 1 1.3 approximately. And if I take the square root of 1.3, I get 1 1.2 approximately. So that's going to be one of my critical points. Let's draw the number line first, which is right there. And our test points are going to be, uh, I forgot to put the plus or minus sign. That's important, right? We can't take the square root of something without putting a plus or minus sign. It's almost, I think of it as almost a law, right? You're breaking a law. So I just broke a law and I kind of like fixed it. <laughs> so it's a plus or minus 1.2. The negative 1 1.2 is going to go here. And the 1.2 is going to go here. We're going to have three test regions. Region A, B, and C. And we want to plug it into our second derivative, which is f double prime of x is equal to 8 times x squared plus 4 times 4 minus 3x squared, and that's just this simplified, all divided by x squared plus 4 to the fourth. So since this is pretty complicated, when we're testing, we're, we're going to test negative 2, 0, and 2, we're only going to plug, we're only going to think about it in terms of signs. So this, would this give me a positive sign? Would this give me a negative sign? Well, if I plug in a negative 2 here, a negative 2 here, and a negative 2 here, what do I get? This is going to be positive because if I square a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4, this is going to be positive. So, so far, the 8 is positive times the positive. We found that this was positive. This is going to be 4. 4 times negative 3 is a negative number that is going to be larger than 4. So, this should be negative. Divided by, this is going to be 4. That's going to be positive. The fourth of that is going to be positive, too. So, a positive times a positive is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So we would be concaving down from here to here. Now let's plug in another test point, like a positive 2. The 8 is still going to remain positive. This is still going to be positive. This is, this is still going to be negative, right? Because, uh, if, uh, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. 4 minus 12 is a negative number. So this is still going to be, remain negative, And this is still going to remain positive. But, a uh, positive times a positive times a negative is a negative. And if I divide by a positive, well, that's still negative. So that means that we're still concaving down from here to here, from 1 half to positive infinity. Now let's test for 0. What happens if I plug in a 0 here? Well, if I plug in a 0 here, that's going to be positive. If I plug in a 0 here, 4 minus 0 is a positive. So that changes. That's going to be a positive. And a positive divided by a positive 
is a positive. So we're actually concaving up from negative 2, 1.2 to 1.2. And we're going to have some inflection points here. We're going to have an IP here and an IP here because there's a change in concavity. To figure out where, let's go ahead and first label, label where we're concaving down and where we're concaving up. So f of x is concaving down from negative infinity to negative 1.2 union with 1.2 to infinity and f of x is concaving up from negative 1.2 oops to 1.2 those are going to be our intervals now let's find our inflection points we're going to have two two inflect, inflection points inflection point at negative 1.2 comma something and another inflection point at 1.2 comma something else well to find this this right here this isn't an interval this represents an actual point so this is a point this is an x and y point well to find the y we plug it into the original equation. The original equation is f of x, which was, let's go ahead and, the original equation was x squared divided by x squared plus 4. x squared divided by x squared plus 4. So I need to plug in this number into this spot to give me the y value. So if I plug in f of negative 1.2 into my equation, negative 1.2 squared divided by negative 1.2 squared plus 4 is equal to what? And notice that if I plug in, if this changes to a positive, that isn't going to change much. This is still going to remain the same. Uh, this is going to be 1.44 divided by 1.44. 4 plus 4 is equal to 1.44 divided by 5.44, which is going to be 0.3, approximately. So this is going to be 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and that's going to be my both, both of my, each problem presents different obstacles and what I'm able to do with these walkthroughs is offer many similar problems to resolve wherever you're stuck. If you're done watching this video, it's safe to assume that you found this video valuable. So refer us to, to your friends. And of course, we're always trying to improve, so let us know how we can do that by in the comment section below.